Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a blessing for us to be in the house of the Lord on today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and he said to rejoice and to be glad in it. I'm excited on today. Come on, we can give God some praise. We can give us with this atmosphere. Listen, we ain't got time to waste. We're living in a season and a time. God says you have to embrace me in this season. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Come on, let's begin to say, I, I, I know we, 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 God ain't calling us to do church as we normally do it. We don't do church as we yeah. as normal as sig. No, we just worship him. Yeah. We usher him in. I'm excited because my, my, my big cousins are here. I can run without music on today. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am so excited what God is doing and what he will do. We well, listen, the Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord oh, with yes. me and let us exalt. Sometimes you got to get the word of God into the atmosphere. Yes, you do. Yes, and you as do. you proclaim the word of God into the atmosphere, the atmosphere begins to shift. Oh, listen, where there's no reference, there's no presence. And so as you begin to reverence the Lord, listen, his, his, and you usher in his presence, that's when change will come. I don't care where you are. If you're at home, if you're in your car, I'm telling you right now, if you begin to give him reverence and honor, it will usher in the presence of God. I don't care if it's in your car. Listen, your car will be full of God, and God will fill you up in the car. I don't care if you're in the grocery store. I don't care if you're in the house. I'm declaring his name because, Lord God, I believe on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we just come to you right now. We say thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to worship you, to lift up your holy name. There is no God greater than you, Father God, and we want to proclaim it and let it be known, Father God. You are the true King of kings and the Lord of lords, Father God, and we bow down before you, Father God. We worship you, Father God. We want you, Father God, to have your way in this place. We want you to move, Father God, however you desire to move, Father God, in this place, Father God. We just want to offer up pure praise on today, Father God. We don't want to offer no strange fire, Father God, fire or worship that you can't identify with, Father God. But we want to offer praise and worship, Lord God, that you incline your ear. We want to offer worship, Father God, that's a sweet-smelling aroma, Lord God, to your nose, Father God. We don't want to do anything, Lord God, that's against your will, Father God, on today. So, Father God, prepare our minds even right now. Prepare our hearts right now, Father God. Purify us, Father God. Only you, Lord God, can clean our garments, Father God. Only you can purify us, Father God. Only you can present us before your presence, Father God. And, Father God, we're just asking, Lord God, as humbly as we know how, have your way right now, Father God. Lord God, have your way, Lord God. You told me, Lord God, that you was going to show up today, Father God. You said you was going to move in a mighty way before I got here. You said you was going to move in a mighty way, Father God. And Father God, I say thank you, Father God, for moving right now. God is moving right now. God is moving right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. I just keep, keep hearing God says healing. Healing is going to take place today. If you've been broken, if you've been stepped on, if you've been walked over, if you've been forgotten, I hear God says healing will take place today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. And we'll forever give your name yes, the praise. Lord. Yes, Lord. Forever give your Thank name you, the praise. Yes, we won't worship no other God but Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Because we know, Father God, there's no God greater than you, Father God. Hallelujah. Any things we ask in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Bye. 
sacrifices but he's looking for living sacrifices and he's looking for the sacrifice of praise what praise will you give him on this morning what will you sacrifice on this morning unto the Lord on today give him your best praise your best sacrifice hallelujah thank you Jesus glory to your name hallelujah hands up arms open wide as the sky we lift you high we lift you high, hands up, arms open, wide as we cry. Lord, we lift your name high, hands up, arms open, wide as the sky. We lift you high, we lift you high, hands up, arms open, wide.
I'm just excited on today. I am not going to prolong the time because I want um, Pastor James and Pastor Glory, however God is going to use you, on today I want you to have the time and the space to go forth. And I don't believe in getting in the way of the Holy Ghost. Amen? I don't want to get in the way of the Holy Ghost, so I'm going to ask Pastor James, come on at this time. However, Pastor Glory, however, the Lord is going to use you on today. Flow, flow, flow in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. Let's say amen as they come. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. amen. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul. Loves Jesus, bless his name. My soul loves Jesus, hallelujah. My soul loves Jesus, my 
my soul loves Jesus, bless his name. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 We praise and magnify God today because, yes, my soul loves Jesus. Yes, he is a wonder in my soul. The things he's done for me, I cannot count at all. Yet we're living in a day where people are dying by the thousands and we're here to give honor, praise, and to glorify the name of the Lord our God, Jesus Christ. Amen. To God be the glory. The great things he has done. To God be the glory for sending his only begotten son come on, to come share on. his blood. Yes. That we might be free from sin and sinning. Amen. God is an awesome God, and we accept the sacrifice of the slain lamb, yes. for he's worthy. Yes. He's worthy, and he chose us. Yes. He chose us to glorify. Amen. We didn't find him. Come on, come on. We come didn't on. find him. Mm -mm. He's always yes. come on. was Knock. knocking. Stand at the door. Yo. One day we heard, yes. and we responded to the knock. Amen. And we're sitting here today free. Yes. Perfect. Yes. In the sight of God. Yes. Adopted in his children. Yes. And we give God the praise. Yes. Today I honor the pastor, Amen. Apostle Justin, today. Amen. I thank him for the opportunity to come here and break bread Amen. of life before you all. Amen. In these times, these circumstances, people are not even going into a church building. Yes. But to God be the glory. We trust and believe and we have faith in God. Knowing that he will bring us through. Yes. Yes. I honor his wife in her absence, and I honor you all here in the house today. Amen. I thank the Lord for my beautiful wife, Pastor Glory Burnett. Amen. And we Amen. are originally from Youngstown, Ohio. Yes. And I left here in the 70s. And I joined the service, and I retired from the service, and then I went to Arizona, and I worked and retired from Arizona. So now that it's 120 degrees, in Arizona, you all may think it's hot, but I'm relaxing here in Youngstown. Praise God. God is good. So I thank him for the opportunity. God has done great things in my life. I was one of those who loved going to church but didn't want responsibility. You know, because they said the more you're responsible for, you know, the more weight that seems to be on your shoulders. But we have a burden bearer. Yeah. We have one who will carry our load. Yeah. And I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm looking around and I'm seeing the flags of different nations. Yeah. And that's a blessing. My calling is foreign missions. Amen. And uh, when I was in the International School of Ministry, we had a class and we had a project to write the vision. Yes. And make it plain. Hallelujah. From Habakkuk. And so I, I said, what am I going to write? What am I going to do? And the Lord revealed to me back when I was nine years old at the altar. He gave me a vision yes. that I never, ever, ever understood. And it was 60 years later before that vision came to fruition. Amen. Yes. And that was to go to the uttermost parts of the yes. world yes. and share his gospel. Hallelujah. So from that Vision for Missions Ministries was born. Yeah. And I, I, I went with my pastor to Africa, and I come home, and, and, and we got invitations. I got invitations to India. I went to India, went to Pakistan, uh, and now we have another church that want to come on board in Ivory Coast. 
West Africa. Amen. So God is good. And what I'm saying is what God can do with one person yes. can touch the lives of thousands. Come on, come on. My first trip to India, I told my pastor, I said, Pastor, um, I, I feel the need to go to India, and I have someone who has invited me to India. I don't know anything about it. I don't know how safe it is. Yeah. And I was not Pastor Burnett. I was not Minister Burnett. I was not Deacon Burnett. I was just Brother James Burnett. So we have to understand we all, we all are called. Yes. When we answered that knock, Come on. we've been called. Amen. So we shouldn't have to agonize and say, Lord, what are you calling me for? Lord, what should I do? He already told you. Amen. The last thing he gave you was a command. Yes. Go to the uttermost parts of the world. So I went, and I went all by myself. Got on the plane, flew 27 hours to India. Got off the plane. I met my host pastor for the very first time. And the first thing he said, come on, let's go. We have 200 pastors waiting for you to preach. Oh, wow. And I said, I can't, I can't do that. No, 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 wait, wait. No, I'm, I'm Brother Burnett. Yeah, yeah. And he says, okay. Oh, man. He says, I said, I can't, I, can't, I can't preach to pastors. This is what legalism does. Yeah, come on. I can't preach to pastors. I'm just Brother Burnett. Uh -huh. He said, I don't understand. Are you saved? Yes. Come on. Then what's the problem? So I got on the phone. I called. I don't, I don't know what time it was when I called the states, but I called my pastor. And I told him, I said, Pastor, I said, they want me to speak to pastor. He said, well, let the Lord use you. <laughs> so I was plunged yes, yes. into ministry. Amen. And let me tell you, the first time speaking with a crowd of people who do not know what you're saying, you have to be cognizant of the words that you're going to use so they can understand. Yes. Because some words we use over here definitely you cannot use in India. But through that, through that one meeting, which I thought I was going to go maybe every three years, every year. I go every year. And we started out what God requires of us to take care of the widows, the orphans, and the children. Amen. And through that, we have an orphan ministry in Pakistan. We have the children's ministry. We have the widows. And we also have the lepers. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there are lepers in the city. It's the leper camp. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the leper colony, when you go there and you see people without hands, without fingers, and they're just praising God, shame on us. Amen. Shame on us. Amen. We have the activities of our limbs. And yet, they have no feet. They have no hands. And they're praising God. What a blessing. So I went there thinking that I was going to teach them something. And in turn, <laughs> they gave me jewels that I cannot compare. Amen. And I've learned that in ministry, Amen. the simplicity of the gospel is what moves people the most. Amen. So my message was to them, if I lose my finger, I'll live. Amen. If I lose my hand, I'll live. Amen. If I lose both my arms, Come on. I'll live. That's right. You take my legs, I'll live. Yeah. And if you pluck out my heart, guess what? I still live. Yes, you do. Because Amen. of God. Amen. We are eternal Amen. beings wrapped up in this cocoon for now, but we are alive forevermore. Amen. That's right. And this is what we have to understand. So this body, I thank the Lord for it, but this is not the be all and end all. Amen. So as we walk around here, with masks on, and in some states, it's up to you whether you want to wear a mask or not. In some states, it's absolutely mandatory to wear a mask. Okay, last year, this was not a thought in our head whatsoever. This is the new day. Yes. Now we're ma wearing masks. We're meeting people that I've not even seen <laughs> your smile. We're looking in the eyes to the soul Amen. of people. Amen. My God. You know? I My mean, God. God is yet awesome. Yes, he is. 
as a saint called of God, there is a requirement for each and every one of us. Because when we accepted him, there's no longer I, I think, I believe, I don't know, I, I, I has disappeared. Yes. Not I, but Christ. Yes, when Christ was on earth, not I, but the will of my Father. Yes. I didn't come to show you me. I came to show you the Father. Yes. So there's a requirement even for us yes. as saints of God to do. And that is to put on the whole armor of God. Yes. That's a requirement. That's, that's a command. You must yes. put on the whole armor of God. What is the whole armor of God? Well, let's use it in the natural. The Grammys, the Oscars, they roll out the red carpet. People come, and now before the Oscar show even takes place, there's the fashion show. So the stars come up, and you, you always have some host that's like, OK, well, um, who are you wearing today? It's not what are you wearing. Who are you wearing? <laughs> well, I'm wearing Oscar de la Renta, yada, 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 yada. Well, who are you wearing? <coughs> and we see these stars, and they, they get the diamonds and stuff, and $100,000 diamonds around the neck. Understand that they're rented. Mm -hmm. Understand that the garments that they're wearing was made by a creator who wants to be known mm -hmm. yeah. even more, right. not so much the individual. Mm -hmm. Who are you wearing? And the, in the status today, the who are you wearing gives you an opportunity to go places that perhaps you should not be. Mm -hmm. But if you dress for success, mm -hmm. guess what? Doors open. Yeah. If you dress for success. Yeah. So when I went into the service, I was going to, I was going to um, Youngstown State University, and I was, I was taking nursing. And pretty much, I was just like bored of skipping classes, because that's what I did. I skipped classes. But I went to the recruiter, and I said, um, how fast can you get me out of here? He said, what do you want to do? I said, I, well, I want to get out of here. Don't send any paperwork to the house. How fast can you get me out of here? Something new was about to take place, and I did not understand it, but I knew I, it was time for me to leave. So I left. I took my physical. I stood up, I gave my allegiance to this country, got to boot camp, had my nice clothes on. We lined up, they gave us a box, and we walked. And everything, shoes, socks, underwear, helmet, boots, towel, washcloth, everything was given. And they said, go put this on, and everything that you have on, put in that box and ship it home because it's no longer yours. Wow. I couldn't say, well, this is a little bit too big. Can you wear it? You represent the country. I can't tailor make the uniform. I represent the country. I went in as James Burnett, but I was told I'm no longer James Burnett. I'm recruit Burnett. Okay. So my identity changed. And the same is in Christ. Your identity has to change when you accept the true and living God. Yes. You can't go by how you feel, how you think, because that is a problem. Amen. Because we're told to do what? Crucify who? That should be our daily prayer. Lord, crucify me in the flesh. Crucify me because my eyes and my eyesight is always right. Your eyes and your eyesight is always right. So it's no longer I. It's who you represent. You see a homeless person walking down the street, and most times we're conditioned to keep walking. We see a guy with a briefcase with a suit on laying against the curb. 
we stop. What's the difference? The garment. The status. The soul is the same. The spirit is the same. But we're conditioned. Because we want to go by what it looks like. How it feels to us. But we have become a peculiar people. So my question is, who are you wearing? So before I break this bread, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, I thank you for yet another day. A day that you have given us that we have never seen before. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. We ask now, God, that you blot out our transgressions, O oh God. Cleanse us from unrighteousness so we may be able to partake of this bread, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, use me, Father, as a vessel, O oh God, to serve your people, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, I am giving them what you have given me, O oh God. For I have partaken of this bread that I break unto these people, O oh God. Bless it, O oh God. That it may be a blessing to the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Who are you wearing? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. The word of God says, put on what? The whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the attack of the devil. Mm -hmm. Not the people, not your neighbors, mm -hmm. not your family, but the attack of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers of the rulers of darkness of this age and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. God is a spirit, so we already know that we worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Everything on the spiritual realm must be dealt with on the spiritual realm. You're dealing with the enemy who's sending attack, swords of attack. You have to deal with that enemy on a spiritual level. Yes. You have to know your word. Jesus was in the, out there on, in the wilderness, and Satan was there offering him things that already belonged to Jesus. But he was still offering, if you do this and bow down before me, I'll give you this. Everything already belongs to the Lord. He used the word. He didn't, he didn't have to growl and get ugly and spit and everything. He resisted the enemy with the word. Amen. Jesus said, resist the enemy, and he will what? That's it. That's all you have to do. Resist the enemy and he will flee. Who are you wearing? Being called by God to represent him is an honor and a privilege. For he called us before he even formed us. So who are we? You have to get beyond this. You have to get beyond generations. Come on. And understand that before you were here, you were there. Yes, yes. Come on. You've always been. Yeah. So he says, I'm going to, I'm going to put you in a body. Come on. And I want you to go down there and I, I want you to give me glory. Yes. I want you to give me praise. Yes. So I'm going to send you down to represent me. And I want you to come back home. But I have to send you with your will. Come on. So we come down here and we got a will packed on us. Our will to choose. Are we going to do this? Or are we going to get caught up by the lust of the eyes and the pride of life? What are we going to do? We've always been. And when we get back home, when we shed this clay and get back. Oh! It was you! Oh! You made it! Mm -hmm. Because we would know each other as we have always been known. Come on. Come on. We are somebody. We are somebody. Galatians, first chapter, verses 15 to 23. Paul said, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. <coughs> Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. I didn't go to the family. I didn't go to my friends. What should I do? 
Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. I didn't go to the church and ask the pastor. Mm -hmm. God called me. Yes. He showed himself to me on the road to Damascus. But I went to Arabia and I returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. When we accept Jesus, we begin a fellowship. We begin a relationship. Mm -hmm. I can have a fellowship with you yes. and not a relationship with Come you. On. That's my choice. But he wants a relationship. Yeah. Because he is love. And we know love requires relationship. Yes. This is what he wants. Our allegiance should be to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. For God I live and for God I die. Yes. When I made that vow in the service, I was pretty much looking at a paycheck. But I stood there with my hand up and I made an allegiance mm -hmm. to serve and defend and to die if I must for my country. We have to make the same allegiance to God. Amen. Period. And wherever we go, wherever we go, some places we're going to be accepted. Some places and most places we're not. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, don't be troubled without that. Don't be troubled. I was the perfect example. <laughs> they rejected me. Amen. They will reject you. Mm -hmm. But hold firm because you have to know who you are. Mm -hmm. We come up as little kids and our parents pretty much pour into us who we are. You just like your daddy. You mm -hmm. ain't look good. Yeah. You just like your mama, sickening. And they pour and pour and pour and we just... And now we're brainwashed. Mm -hmm. So now we have to go before the Father and say, well, who am I? Mm. Who am I? You are my child. I see my blood. We have the DNA. Mm -hmm. You belong to me. You are perfect. I can't wait to get you home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's who you are in Christ. Don't let anyone tell you who you are because your Father has already told you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Period. Don't go by what it looks like. <coughs> if, I have a, if I have a plant, a beautiful plant with flowers, and I present it to you, you thank me for the what? The flowers. Mm -hmm. Do you thank me for the dirt? You thank me for the flowers. Mm -hmm. So this dirt, this is not the flower. The plant is here, and this is what he sees, mm -hmm. the flower. Mm -hmm. And in his eyes, it's perfect. Like he said, he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Oftentimes, people believe that once we accept him, then our life will be sweet and our joy complete. Because I'm saved, saved, saved. And then when you sing the song, when you say it, here comes trouble. <laughs> Where in the Bible did it say as it was going to be easy? <laughs> no. You walk, you have good days. Mm -hmm. You walk, you have some days like, Father, I don't feel you. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard from you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm questioning my own salvation. And he told you, I'm right here. I'm right here. So when you hit that rocky road and you don't think you can make it, he says, I got you. Yeah. I got you. I done sent you a guide, comforter, everything you need to make it through that journey. So you don't give up. It is a rocky road at times, but you don't give up. Yeah. Everything good takes work. Mm -hmm. Everything good takes work. Come on. And that, as they say, even with a diet, if you want to eat healthy, oh, 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 
That takes work. Yes. It takes money too, because you got to eat right. You got to buy the right food. That's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. But everything good takes work. The enemy has declared war on us, and it is therefore necessary and important that we understand this spiritual warfare. We have to understand that we are attacked every day, nonstop. This is why we pray without ceasing. Yes. This is why we die daily. This is why every day, morning by morning, new mercies I see. I messed up yesterday. But today, I don't see a flaw. There's nothing on my report where I messed up. It's already gone. It's gone. And when whatever we have done, when it goes under the blood, he said, I will remember it no more. As powerful and all-knowing as he is, I don't, I don't remember. What are you talking about? What I did last week, you know what I did last week, Lord, you know. What are you talking about? That's gone. If we keep doing this, we're going to mess up. Okay, so we got here. We stumbled. Focus and keep on keeping on. Your faith will get you through. Our armor... That whole armor that is required will prepare us to make it through this life. And the armor you get is beautiful, it's shiny, and it's uncomfortable. And when I say uncomfortable, you will understand later. But it's absolutely necessary to be equipped and empowered with spiritual tools that, of God in order to be victorious in this life. The Lord reminds us that we are not fighting flesh and blood. It is the enemy who comes to kill. So just as we who worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and truth, so then we must fight the spiritual battle. Putting on the whole armor of God was even spoken of in the Old Testament. Isaiah 59, verses 17. He put on righteousness yes. like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. And he put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself with zeal as a mantle. Yes. He did that. He did that. Wow. So what must we do? That's right. We, we can't trim the stuff and, you know, the helmet too heavy. I, I, I got a nice fedora, straw hat. I would love to wear it. You know, and, the, and the, the, these, these, these. Whatever these things you gave me, these feet sharp, what are these things? They're heavy. I like my sandals. I want to wear my sandals. You're on the battlefield. We sing it. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I got on my Gucci for my Lord. You're on the battlefield. There's a certain garment you have to wear on the battlefield. And there's a time when you can relax some of those garments. But you're on the battlefield. And you have to be fully Fully, fully equipped. In 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 3 through 5, Paul says, For though we walk in the flesh, mm -hmm. we do not war after the flesh. Right. For the weapons of this warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Through God, the pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the what? Knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I lay in the bed. Things come to my mind. I did not invite him in there, but they're there. Mm -hmm. They're there. I got to concentrate. Lord, I thank you. Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, you're wonderful. God, you're awesome. God, I love you. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, it will leave. It will leave. Because you're saved does not mean that things are not going to come into your mind. Yeah. Because you're saved does not mean that you're no longer human. Yeah. But I've given you all the equipment you need to make it. Amen. Being in Christ already makes us victorious. Already. Mm -hmm. We're already winners. It's already done. Yes. <laughs> but the Lord does not pull us from the battlefield until he calls us home. We ought to stand firm and resist the enemy. Now, we may be on the battlefield, or we may be in this group on the battlefield, and I get a set of orders. Oh, I, I got to go to India. Okay. 
that don't mean I take off everything. Mm -hmm. I go to India. And like Paul says, I am all things to all people. Right. So we have to understand cultures. Mm -hmm. We have to understand the atmosphere that you're dealing with. There are some atmospheres, yeah, you, you walk in the door and it's, it, uh, everybody holler, everybody, and there are some that's solemn. But you have to understand that God is in the midst yes. of all. So submit yourselves then unto God and resist the devil and he will flee. As a babe in Christ, it is the responsibility of the host of saints to protect the unarmored individual until that babe becomes strong and can be strong enough to be equipped with the armor. So, my journey is not the same as your journey. You, I, I may have been in the vineyard a long time. You may just be getting in the vineyard. As saints of God, we must watch out for each other. Yes. Help them up when they stumble. Don't laugh, don't mock, don't down them. We have to help to get them strong. My granddaughter, bless her heart, we're trying to get her now. She's, what, seven and a half months old? It's time to stand. She don't like standing. Put your shoes on. She, she don't want to wear shoes. But you have to go through a process. You have to walk. Now, I don't expect her at two months old to get up and walk in the kitchen with some shoes on and say, could you give me something to eat? I need a bottle of milk. No. There's a process, a transition. Still, still a baby, infant, toddler, young adult, teenager, adult, senior, back to adult, <laughs> back to a child. <laughs> That's the cycle of life. Once a man, what? Twice a child. That's the cycle of life. So we have to understand where you are, where you are, where you are, where you are, where you are in Christ and to help. On the battlefield now, my armor may not look like your armor. My armor might have some rust spots, a lot of rust spots, dents, blood stains, because I've been on the battlefield. But I have to wear the armor. You know, and sometimes make it a little, a little rusty. Lord, I need your oil. Send me your oil, Lord. Send me your oil. Send me your oil. Yeah. He'll do that. He'll do that. Whatever you need, he says, just ask. So once the armor has been placed, the focus is not to look for those who have carried you so long to keep carrying you. The focus is to get to the front of the line and be able to keep the perimeter strong and watch for weaknesses within the wall. So there are rank structures on the battlefield. You have new privates all the way to the general. And as I say, when one, one goes out, fill in the gap. Fill it, fill it in quickly. This is what you do. This is how you overcome. We link. We lock. So when an enemy tries to come in and whisper things to you, this should not be. No, sister. No, sister. Come on. Well, I don't know if I can make it. Oh, you can make it. You already won. Come on. Keep moving. You already won. We got you. And this is how we did. In the service, we ran, we ran. We run in the formation, and then God falls out. And, and we have to run. We have to continue to run in circles until I got to get up. And be honest, we were very upset. Because what our three miles should have been may be ten miles. Because they kept falling out. We weren't allowed to stop running. We ran in circles. We ran in circles. Until they got up. Then we understood. We understood that we are a unit. If we divide that one and divide that one and divide that one and divide that one, you're left alone on the battlefield for a slaughter. So we have to be helpers one to another. It's, an, it's unfortunate that in today's world we have exchanged the arm of God for fashions. <laughs> that make us look and feel good. This is one of the newest tactics of the enemy. No one wants to look like they're on the battlefield. Prosperity messages are preached to give us, us a promise of heaven on earth. That heaven on earth does not come until we come back from heaven and the new Jerusalem comes down. Yeah. And we've seen this song, let's get back to Eden and live on top of the world. It's not scriptural. So we have to try the spirit by the spirit. It sounds good, yeah. but it's not scriptural. 
Prosperity has slipped in big time. I can't go to church today because I, I don't have a new outfit to wear. I can't do this because I don't have that. Now what happened? In Africa, we go to the place to, to have service and we're riding for like 40, 50 miles and we see people on the side of the road and they're just walking. And I say, well, who are these people? He said, oh, they're on their way to the, to the conference. They walked maybe four days already, walking. Four days already. I'm riding, air condition. But God is awesome because when you know who he is and when you know who you are in him, nothing matters but him. That's right. Nothing matters but him. Let the world judge you if they want to. Whatever the world has to say to you, you have to understand they have no right to say anything anyway. Let them talk. They're going to do that. They're supposed to do that. That's how it makes you strong. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody in this room, I guarantee you, have either burnt their finger, their hand, or something. You've been burned. You touched something hot. We all have. Everybody have <coughs> coughed on something when they was eating. That's. You don't give up and say, well, I'm gone. No, you hold on and you keep on keeping on. We believe that having more is the product of success. Mm -hmm. Whereas more can also mean more weights. Mm -hmm. So you may have a lot. But there's no spiritual evidence or prerequisite that tells us that heaven on earth is going to be wonderful. But we are to what? Lay our treasures where? In heaven. That's it. Because when all of this is gone, what we've laid up there... When we leave, is what we pick up. Come on. Come on. So if you've had a wonderful good time here and laid nothing up, don't expect anything because you fed your flesh. Come on. And in this day and time, in Timothy, perilous times shall come. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we have to understand the signs of the times. We have to know exactly what's going on in the world today. Amen. Washington, D.C. does not have the answer. Amen. Your politicians do not have the answer. Things are going to get better in a couple of years. There's nothing going to get better because the closer we are to Christ's return, the worse things are going to be. So what the saints should be doing is rejoicing and looking up because something's in the atmosphere. Something's going on. So as the world is like, what are we going to do? i got to wear a mask. I don't want to wear a mask in the store. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I'm mad. I'm upset. While the world doing all that, we're, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. God is good today. Yeah. It's a wonderful day. God bless you. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. You know you got the goods. Yeah. Because, yes, perilous times have come upon us. The earth itself is now having contractions. Come on. Mm. And we know contractions mean what? Sooner or later, whether you like it or not, <laughs> labor, yes. delivery takes place. We're that close. We hear people say that I'm waiting for the second coming of Christ, the second coming. Saints, we don't wait for the second coming. We wait for the rapture. The second coming, we're with him. There's an army and witnesses. We're riding on horses. That's the second coming. So we're in the atmosphere now that any moment, any second, we can be caught up. And we're gone. So don't, don't, don't get deceived to say, well, you know, second coming, you know, when Jesus comes, Jesus comes. When he comes, I'm coming with him. Because I've already been to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we're coming back now to judge the world. So we're looking for that blessed hope. And truly, it truly is coming soon. We have people in the earth right now who are saying, I am he. I am Jesus. And he does great miracles. And you see, they do all kinds of miracles. Don't be deceived by all these miracles. Amen. Miracles, now we read that from, from the Old Testament all the way through. Moses would do something, and what? What? The magicians would. I can do that too. Right. Don't be deceived yeah. by a lot of miracles. You don't need to run everywhere. Right. Ooh, ooh, right. ooh. You don't have to do that. Right. Trust God. Amen. If he tells you to go, then you go. 
If it's not in your spirit to go, eat this warning. Don't go. Because what miracle might take place? An invitation of other demons. So you got to be very, very careful. It's trickery. Very careful. Lucifer, from the very beginning, we already know that he was the most beautiful created angel ever. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't even know how you could express the beauty that he had. And in him was music. Every time he moved, music, music. We were taught as kids, you know, the devil, he got this long tail and horns and what have you. We were taught that, but he's a beautiful angel of light who can speak so nice to you and it makes sense to you and it'll be all right. You don't have to do that. He's a deceiver. Yes. Now we all know if a monster walked in here, we're not going to sit there and listen or be, be deceived. Right. So we have to understand how he operates and not be seduced. We can't be seduced. His anointing and his gifting was praise and worship. It's not taken away from him. Period. It's been diluted with the world. Everything that says Jesus, 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 song, 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 mm -hmm. is not Jesus, 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 song, song. Amen. That's right. And you've seen it. I know you've seen it. Get on the keyboard, start playing music. You're up on your feet already. Don't even know what we're about to say. <laughs> Mary had a little lamb. We don't know because we're caught up. Yes. We're caught up. Mm -hmm. Choir sing. Oh, they're singing. And you call, what they say? I don't know, but they show singing. Woo! I don't know the words. You don't even understand them. Right. You have to be discerning mm -hmm. of everything, yes. everything in life, mm -hmm. because it looks good, it sounds good, mm -hmm. but it's no good. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. In the world, but such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then mm -hmm. if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Don't think that they don't know how to do praise and worship. Mm -hmm. Come on. Don't think that they don't know the word. Mm -hmm. They do the word before you do the word. Amen. They know every bit of the word. But they twist it mm -hmm. and deceive it yeah. and make you... Well, let me think. Yeah, think. What would you think? What, what do you think? Well, I, I, here come the I. Well, the word of God tells me that um, that's it. That's the answer. Not what, I, not what I think. So there are those who may be right along your side who will say, well, it doesn't take all this armor to be victorious. How can one believe they can become effective on the battlefield without the whole armor unless they have already been deceived? So don't be deceived. Romans chapter 6, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 17. What is this armor that you're talking about? What is it? You just, you just spoke. Now, nah, what is it? Ephesians 6 and 17, your helmet of salvation. It will protect your thoughts and it will keep you in perfect peace. Yes. It says it will protect your thoughts mm -hmm. and keep you in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. So if I take off my helmet, there goes my perfect peace. Mm -hmm. Now what kind of thoughts are coming in my head? <laughs> You'll know the fruit <laughs> when you see it. Mm -hmm. So we have to have on that protection. I think, well, what is that? What that... Um, what was that? Uh, 
Heroes movie where the guy wore the helmet. I can't think of his name now, but he all, Magneto or whatever he was. Magneto yeah, yeah. had the helmet, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But to take it off. Mm-hmm. So we have a helmet of salvation. So with so much technology in the world today, there is hardly a moment where you can find the still waters of peace. Hardly a moment. You can't turn on TV. You get tired of hearing the news, the same old stuff, the same old stuff, bombard everything. T- t- noise, 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 noise. Phone calls, this, that, knock on the door, da, da, everything. The, the, the baby crying just we're bombarded with a lot of noise to keep our mind off of him. That's the strategy of the enemy. He's the prince of the air. He controls this atmosphere, the waves. God made him a prince. Who am I to judge? <laughs> okay. There is noise everywhere. The word of God says that he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Jesus. Now we have the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth. That's a requirement. It will protect your heart, your vital organs. And truth will be surround you. Truth. You take off that. Hey, how you doing, baby? Don't be deceived. That's not truth. That's a feeling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That belt of truth. Mm-hmm. And that breastplate. We call it a breastplate, but it actually goes all the way around. Mm-hmm. So, those who are doing you bad this way, and those who are doing you bad this way, mm-hmm. you're protected. Mm-hmm. That armor was made because that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Those things are going to happen. You're going to get stabbed in the back. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. You're going to be attacked to the heart. Yep. This is why that was created. So if you take that off, whew. Oh, this world is so messed up. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, I just feel, I just, I can't take another day living here. I'm, I, my heart is heavy. I'm just, I'm just, woe is me, whoa, whoa. Because you put your heart out for the enemy to take it <coughs> any kind of way he wants to. <coughs> the shield of faith. You will be attacked by your enemies from within the church <laughs> and from without the church. <laughs> Without the church, outside, yeah, you know, they're going to do you bad. Don't get it. They're going to do you bad because they have no control. They have no father except for the devil. Inside the church, hmm, that's where the pain comes from. Right. You did that to me. I didn't do nothing to you. Why? You, I just don't like you. But, but, keep the faith. Yes. Keep the faith. God said I'm his, and I will do what he tells me to do. If he tells me to go over and lay hands, um, I will go over and I will lay hands if he tells me to do that. Faith. Not to show off, but if he tells you. Now, there's been times when the Lord has told me to do things, and I'm like, (laughs) I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I paid for it. And he let me know, why didn't you? <laughs> so this is what I teach when I, go to, when I go to India. We have been called to go to the uttermost parts of the earth. The command. So I got a set of orders for you to go to Israel. Israel? Do you see this? I'm African. I want to go to Africa. But the Lord, the Lord is sending you. No. He ain't told me that. <laughs> Matthew 28, 19, and 20 go to the where? Uttermost <laughs> parts. That's another trick of the enemy. Why are you going way over there? We got poor people over here. Why are you going way over there? We got hungry people over here. Why, why, why? Because he said go to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. And if I have to go by myself to reach one person, Amen. I'm the only one who got that key. Amen. So if I don't go, mm-hmm. that person oh God. is going to be lost. Because yes. this key 
fits that lock. You may have heard the gospel, and I just come along and say, God bless you, I love you. And it just changed your whole world. We have to understand who we are, how powerful we are, what we are in Christ. In India, my wife will tell you, now, there's, there's over two million gods. So when you go over there, it's not like here in the city where there's church on every corner and everything, pretty much everybody's a Christian. When you go over there, you are, you are on some strange territory because you got two million gods and those demons look at you as, what you doing here? I mean, it, it, it's that you know it. And if you're not equipped and powered up, Come on. next thing you know, you might be going, la, 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 la. We don't know. Yeah. But you've got to be equipped and ready to break that bondage of all them gods. And I tell them, I says, you know, you serve all these gods. What? Have you heard them? Because <laughs> the one I serve, I can talk to. Amen. And guess what? He hear me. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't believe me, and you do all your homage to all your gods with all sincerity, mm-hmm. I have one request. I want you to call on my God and you ask him, are you the creator of all things? And do you have a son named Jesus? And if so, I need to hear. And if I don't hear, then you don't exist. I say, if you do that with your heart, I guarantee you, you will hear from God. Because that's who he is. That's who he is. We have people getting blown up, burned for the sake of Christ. And I, I told one pastor, I said, Pastor, how do y'all, how do y'all get up? And, and you go to church and, and, and guys out there with machine guns trying to protect you all and, and you got, they're bombing the children's choir, the kids got blown up. How do y'all, and you sing and you're happy? How do you do that? He said, easy. He says, because every day we wake up, we expect to see him. One way or the other. It's a win-win situation. He says, on TV, have you seen the people that got beheaded? Yeah. He says, did you see any of them screaming and hollering and crying? Hmm, no. He said, because our God is so awesome. The only thing they're cutting is the body. He's already gone. He's already gone. I said, oh, Lord. That's faith. Yes. That's faith. So we got to have that shield of faith to believe that whatever comes, that's not to be all and end all. There's something better. It can only get better mm-hmm. by serving Christ. It can only get better Amen. by serving him. So you pick up your shield of faith. Walk by faith. Go into the unforeseen path. Don't go by what it looks like. You may want a desire, but go by what the Lord has promised. Your orders are not tailor-made to satisfy you. Yeah. Your orders come from God to reach a lost soul. Period. And we pray, Lord, use me, Lord, use me, Lord, use me. And when he says, okay, let's do this. Well, um, <laughs> now, my trips, my trips to India, God is, God is good because it's a faith walk. I didn't go to the church and say, church, I want money to send me. It's a faith walk. I've asked friends in the church, and some gave. Most. That's a wonderful thing you're doing. I'm going to pray for you. God bless you. I hope he makes it out, make a way for you. Give me something back, please. So my first trip was sponsored by non-believers. My God. My God. You, you, you understand what I'm saying, right? You understand. My high school, and I'm, when I'm saying high school, well, okay, I, I graduated in 71. My high school English teacher mm-hmm. that I still stay in contact with today is a Jew. Mm-hmm. And she said, Jim, you know, I don't believe like you believe. I don't, we don't believe the same thing. Mm-hmm. But I've always believed in you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some of my students from Pakistan, Muslims, Muslim. Mm-hmm. Papa, mm-hmm. what do you want? I said, whatever you can give, I'm on my way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't believe like you believe, mm-hmm. but if you could, mm. if you can buy rice 
and stuff. Okay. Because everything belongs to God. He owns it all. And he touches the hearts of the people. So what you lay in my hand, whatever seed you put in my hand, I'm taking your seed, planting it where you're not even there. I come back home, talk to you. Your harvest is growing. Your fruit is growing because that's your seed. That's your blessing. That's your reward. <coughs> it has nothing to do with me anymore. And this is what we have to understand. We plant the seed and let the Lord do the rest. And his promises are true. His promises are true. There wasn't a trip that I had planned that I could not go because of finances. And I have my own family to take care of. I have my own, own But it came in. It came in. And I show pictures. You know, you gave me money for rice. The money you gave me, I bought 2,000 pounds of rice. We fed 400 widows and children. We did this. We did that. Because it's taking care of the spirit, soul, and body. I share the gospel. I feed you just like Jesus did. These people are hungry. You don't want to hear my word because you're halfway sleepy. Right. I have to feed you. Yes. So we take care of the total, total man. Mm -hmm. Now your feet, it should be shod with the preparation of peace. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, 15. You will be planted and grounded, taking on the position to strike. When necessary, and to defend the gospel of the peace. So you assume the position. Mm -hmm. And you wait. And you march. And you mark time sometimes. And you go back a little bit, and you go forward. But you do listening to the commander and being obedient to his instructions, and you won't go wrong. A lot of, lot of our saints have left, even with this COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen it, bishops, everybody just pew, pew, COVID. Oh, see, mm -hmm, see, they must have been sinning in the church. No. God chooses. If I plant my garden, when I want a tomato, I go out and pick a tomato when I feel like picking a tomato. That's my tomato. Amen. So when he chooses to pick, right. whatever he wants to pick from his garden, mm -hmm. that's up to God. Yes. That's up to God. But we rejoice in knowing that the race has been won. We still got a ways to go yet. I don't quite see my finish line, but I just keep, I have to keep on keeping on. I have to keep on keeping on. Knees swollen, arms hurting, eyes burning from salt, sweat, but I keep on. And I keep on. Because God has promised me something. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. And you mean to tell me it's not ready yet? <laughs> That's an awesome place that you cannot co comprehend mm -hmm. what he has planned for you who believe and who have accepted him. So the question again, who are you wearing? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'm, 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 I'm wearing the armor. I'm in the Lord's army. I'm wearing the armor of the Lord. And we make up the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's who I'm wearing, period. Mm -hmm. Did it confuse you? Well, let me explain it to you. For God so loved the world. Yes. And there's your opportunity. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so who are you wearing? So, we sing this song, in the name of Jesus we have the victory. Yes, we do. But we don't want to be in a battle to be victorious. We just want the victory. <laughs> <laughs> we know the game. We know how it works. We all know how it works. So, everything you have to do. That cake smells good, but it takes work. I can't bake a cake. My wife can throw it out on cakes. But it takes a little bit of this and a little bit of that. That's how I can tell you. I know it takes some eggs, some sugar, some milk, some flavor. Ratios, I do not know. So if I make what she made, guaranteed it won't be the same. She's anointed for this. So we all have an anointing. We all have something that we can do. We all have a key to reach the world. And our first start is representing him by our look, our walk, our talk, our fellowship. That's the first. Because believe it or not, the world watches. 
They watch you more than they watch the world. Yeah. You have to understand that. If you don't believe it, make a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> and let you know. See, I knew. See, I knew my spirit that you wasn't all that. I knew. See, God told me. <laughs> but see, so we represent Christ. Christ. He's the answer. So realize your victory. Give praise to the victor. Shout praises of victory. We are winners. We're not losers. We're victorious. We are the children of God. Choose your gear. Who are you wearing? I pray that this bread that I have shared has been filling for you all. I ate the bread first. I can't serve you what I haven't tasted. I'm the first. Oh, this is this is good. I got to share this. So I thank you, and I hope you receive this bread coming from the Father. God bless you. I'm going to turn this over to Apostle, and if he wants to do the altar call or come up here and get recharged, and whatever you left on the bedside or your helmet or your shield of faith, pick it up. Amen. Kick off them Gucci's, <laughs> them sandals, and them fedora hats and all that. Put it away. Amen. This is warfare. Yes, this is warfare. This is warfare. We don't want to go on this journey this long and then get to the end and didn't make it. My God. <laughs> My God. The, word, the song says, so I'll cherish mm -hmm. the old rugged cross yes. till my trophy, my trophy, what's my trophy? Till my trophy at last I lay down. Yes, yes. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it for a crown. Hold on. Hold on, saints. Hold on. We are all in this together. And I, what, I, I, I thank God for the simplicity of the gospel. It doesn't take all of it. The simplicity of the gospel. And the most simplistic thing is to love and to show love. Not expected in return, but to love and to show love. God bless you, saints. Amen. 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 Come on, let's get a little hand clap. clap. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. We're in the house of God. Don't be giving God no pity pat praise. Hey, you breathing, aren't you? Hey. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that begun a good work yes. in you yes. shall complete it. Yes. He started a good work, He's yes. going to finish it. Mm -hmm. We may not look to anybody's expectations. They please, but as long as God's pleased with us, all that matters. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we must continue to plow. Don't look back. Continue to plow. Keep on, keep on. Continue to keep pushing. I thank Amen. God for this message because this Amen. message is telling us, listen, keep your, keep your, keep, keep your helmet of salvation. Keep your, the godly uh, attire on and keep doing what God has called you to do. Stop waiting for man to say when you can go. Amen. There's nothing worse than that, to be connected to somebody and they tell you when you can go and when you can't go. No, 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 you just go because you heard the Lord told you to go. That's how Sick Ministry started. That's how Visions for a Mission started. Yes. We heard the go, mm -hmm. and we just went. Some people Amen. didn't believe. Listen, there is a ministry within you, and God has yes. already told you to go. Matter of fact, he already gave you the destination, yes. but you've been tiptoeing around it right. because you're waiting for your bishop or somebody to say, come on, you can go. No, uh -uh. I didn't wait for, I, didn't, I wasn't ordained when I started this ministry. My wife and I was sitting at the, the kitchen table at my, my, how you doing, dad? My father-in-law is here. Bless him. We were sitting at his table. I said, listen, this is what God called me to do. Mm -hmm. Listen, God has called you to go. Just go. Yes. Everything will come together. Mm -hmm. By mm -hmm. faith, everything yes. will come will together. Come together. Yes. We 12 years in. People were saying we ain't going to make it. Because mm -hmm. how long? You probably been, you, of course, you're way older than me. So he got, he got, he got, 40, <laughs> he got, he got 40 years on me. 40, 50 years of ministry. But all he heard was a go. Mm -hmm. and, and all we do here at SIG Ministry, we're going to equip you to go or we're going to train you to go. Mm -hmm. Come get refilled mm -hmm. and go. Mm -hmm. Get what you got to get and do what God called you to do. Amen. 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 Pastor Amen. Gloria, would you have words or anything? I, oh, I just wanted to greet the people. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Let's say amen as Pastor Gloria comes. Amen. 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 We thank God for her. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I thank the Lord for being here. I honor all of you. I honor the pastor, the leader, of the shepherd of this uh, flock here. And I also honor my husband. Uh, it's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. I feel blessed to be in the house of the Lord because Amen. this is the first time I've been in church in months. Mm -hmm. I just got here from uh, Arizona a few weeks ago, and everything was closed. Mm -hmm. and if you listen on the news, it is really bad in Arizona. Mm -hmm. But you know, millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones Come who on. did. Yes. You all are one of the ones who yeah. did. Yeah. Yes. That the work is done. Yes. Right. And you know, we have to put our faith and trust in Jesus. Yes, yes. Because you know, without him, we can do nothing. Amen. Without him, we'll fail. Yes. We'll be like a ship without a sail. Mm -hmm. yes. So, you know, saints, I just want to encourage you to keep your faith and your trust in God. Amen. Amen. Just hold on. Hold on. Pray. Yes. Fast. Yes. And seek his faith. Yes. Because God has something for all of us to do. Amen. Yes. Amen. We have a work to do. Amen. There's a world out there. It seems like the, the, the worse that things are getting, the more angrier people are becoming. Mm -hmm. The more ungodly they're becoming. Yes. Yes. And we have to realize that he is Christ is soon to come. Yes. Yes. And he wants us to look up because Amen. our redemption draws yes, nigh. Yes. Yes. So I encourage you to keep the faith. Be encouraged. Stay encouraged. Mm -hmm. Keep your arms around each other. Yes. You Amen. know, and just pray. Mm -hmm. Because God, like I said, he is soon to come. Um, I just praise the Lord for just being here. You all don't know how happy I am just to be in church yes. one more time. Yes. Because this is all I know. Yes. I thank God for saving me one day from my oh, sin, <coughs> sanctifying me through the truth, yes. and filling me with the precious Holy yes, Ghost. Yes, yes, and it's yes. the Holy Ghost that keeps us yes. and will guide us yes. and direct us. Hallelujah. So you pray my strength Thank in the Lord Jesus. as I pray for each and every yes, one Lord. of you. Thank, Thank you, you for this opportunity yes, to Amen. 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 I'm not going to prolong too much time. I'm going to ask Pastor if he can assist me for those who desire to give. Listen, on this week, and today starts um, what the Lord has put in my spirit. About the end of, getting close to the end of June, I was asking the Lord, what do you have for the month of July? What is it that you want me to tell your people? And the Lord says, I want to perform miracles. I want to perform miracles um, in your life. And so what we're going to do, starting today for seven days, we're going to fast for one hour each day. One hour each day. Now, if you desire to fast longer, listen God says, amen, okay. But dedicate one hour where there's no social media, there's no eating, you can drink water, um, but just consecrate yourself. One of the things that Lord put in my spirit on yesterday, because he, he was talking to me about, um, about sh a new shift or a new season. Whenever there's a new season, God always consecrates you for the new season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a prayer. How do you know that? Because when after Moses died, Thank he you, called Joshua. He told Joshua to tell the people to consecrate themselves because you're going to what cross over the Jordan. Yes. That that time when, when Moses and, and the children of Israel crossing over the Red Sea, he said, "Now it's a new season, Joshua. I've called you up, and you're going to cross over the Jordan." So whenever it's a new season, God will always consecrate you for the new season. And so um, what the Lord has put on my heart that during this week, for seven days, fast for one hour. Mm -hmm. If you fast longer, that's cool. And I'm believing by faith what the Lord has put in my spirit that he's going to perform miracles. He's going to perform miracles. There were some things that God needs to do miraculously in your life. Yes. <clears throat> and I'm believing by faith mm -hmm. that by through obedience, you're going to, the message this coming Sunday is dealing with through obedience that's how your miracle came. There are sometimes you have to be obedient. You wrestle with God so much, and he's trying to perform miraculous work in your life, but you fight and wrestle with God. Mm -hmm. God says, I want to perform mm -hmm. miracles mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. So for the next seven days, and then on the seventh day, which will be next Sunday, our Thank service you. will be at 1115 because I have to preach at Teen Challenge. I'm coming straight from Teen Challenge. I have a lot. I'm hoping that my intercessory prayer warriors will be here. 
Pastor Bill will have the place open. I would love my prayer warriors to be in here of uh, setting the atmosphere. So when I come in, we're just going to come in to worship. We're going to come in and, and, and go to the next level in God. Amen. But I want you to sow a seed on next Sunday, whether it's $7, whether it's 17 whether it's 27 whatever the Lord puts on your heart. But it has to do with a 7 If it's $7, don't look at the amount. Sometimes we look at the amount and we think God ain't going to bless it. It's the obedience. It's the obedience. So sow a seed of $7, 17 It could be $12.70. Sow a seed. Amen. And on that seed, believe. But I'm believing all this week that as you fast and as you consecrate <clears throat> yourself, as you pull away, you set that time and, and make it as consistent as possible. Okay? Because I know everybody got busy schedules. But set that hour where he said, Lord, it's just me and you. And I'm believing by faith. Not only will he not only speak to you, I'm believing he's going to work some miracles in your life. God has been doing miraculous things in your life, but you've been overlooking them because they're not big enough. Hallelujah. God says you've got to start acknowledging the small miracles. If you're in your right mind, God says that's a miracle. If you're able to walk and talk, there are, there are some people that can't walk and talk and lift their hand. These are miracles that God is doing in our life. You, some of you should be out of your mind because you know where you came from. And God has kept you even when you was messed up and then brought you into a new season, saved you and cleaned you up. And God says, you didn't give me no praise for the miracle because you didn't look at it as a miracle. God says, I'm trying to perform miracles even in our baby's lives. I believe by faith that whatever our baby's been wrestling with and dealing with that you ain't told mama, you ain't told daddy, I'm trying to tell you God will perform a miracle in your life. Because I believe in miracle signs and wonders. And you as believers need to believe in miracle signs and wonders. God ain't stopped performing. God ain't stopped. I feel his anointing so heavy because some of you don't think he's still miraculous. No, no. We, we, we serve a miracle working God. We do. But guess what you got to do? Just be obedient. Yes, Lord. Just be obedient. Lord, have your way. What is it that I got to do? I feel like I wish I, I feel like preaching, and I gotta wait till next Sunday to deliver it. I ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna be obedient. But listen, yes, this week, seven days, one hour a day, sow a seven dollar seed or or a seed with seven in it, believing like Lord, I believe, I believe. And when you're fasting, Lord, I believe that you're gonna perform a miracle. Lord, I, I've been having this issue in my life for the past 10, 15 years, and I didn't believe you, but Lord, I believe you right now. But Lord, perform a miracle. Watch he do it. Yes, Because the Bible says he won't withhold any good thing from any good thing. Who wouldn't serve a God that said, I ain't going to withhold any good thing? Because everything about him is good. He says, I ain't going to withhold it. I'm going to give it to you. Hallelujah. So I thank God for all those who are giving. I, I, I just, I, I'm just excited. I got family here, and I'm over here cutting up. I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, you know, But I am so honored to have um, Pastor James and, and Pastor Gloria. They're my big cousins, but I'm excited. You know, I had an opportunity. You just don't understand to see family come oh, yeah. together Amen. And, and fellowship. That's right. That's right. You know, my brother's a bishop in Nashville, and, and, and we doing ministry. Yeah. Listen, I've been connected with Visions for Ministry for years. Yes, yes, you have. But this just made it more even sweeter now. Yeah. And so the, the proceeds that you're sowing uh, will be sown into Visions for, um, for Missions. Um, because they're doing a great work. I've seen pictures. Mm -hmm. I've seen videos. And to see some of these, you know, the lepers, man, and, yeah. and, and some of them, they ain't got no fingers. They ain't yeah. pray. I've seen it. Yeah. It, yes. it. It touches my heart. And, yes. and Pastor Jay, Pastor Jay waiting for us to get over there. Yes, yes. He, he, he be pulling on me. <laughs> He's a brother yes. waiting for you to come over. So when the time is right, the Lord will release for us to go. But listen, let's stand. Uh, I know, you know, I believe in the hour of power, but when the Holy Ghost is moving, I let the Holy Ghost have his way. I'm praying through the message and everything that was said. I'm praying that you're strengthened on today. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know what you've been yes. wrestling with. Thank you, Jesus. But as I pray in closing, I'm praying that the power of God, that the anointing of God fall on you, Thank you Lord. in a mighty way. I feel his power on you this morning. Yes, Lord. I'm praying. Now, I want you to believe with me. Because I'm believing for you, and I'm mm -hmm. believing for myself, but you got to believe for yourself, too. 
Father in heaven, we come to you right now yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father God. We know, Father God, that, that, that we can pray. I can pray right here, and you can move in a powerful and miraculous way, Lord God. And I'm just praying right now in the name of Jesus, Thank Father. You, I Jesus. believe right now before we even exit this place Thank you, Lord. that you can perform a miracle Thank right you, now, Father God. I, I, I believe, you, Father God. That whatever miracle that needs to be performed in, in, in your son's or your daughter's life, Father God, even if they're still doubting, Father God, let me step in their place and believe for them that you can perform a miracle in their life, Father God. You can set them free, Father God. You know the struggle, and they know only you can deliver them. Only you can set them free. Father God, I pray right now that you move in a miraculous way right now, like never before, Lord God. Allow your anointing, Lord God, that just in us to fall upon us, Father Thank God, you, and move through us however you desire to move, Father God, because we know our situations can't stand in your presence. Yes, Whatever we've been battling and wrestling with cannot stand in your presence, Father God. Listen, as we bow down, our situations bow down, Father God. Our, our circumstances and stuff we've been wrestling with and struggling with has to bow down, Father yes. God. And so, Father God, we humble ourselves before yes, you, Father Jesus. God, praying, Lord God, that you just move mightily right now, Father God. And if there's any doubt in the house, any misunderstanding in the house, Father God, help us with this misunderstanding. Help us with our unbelief, Father God. And just move beyond that, Father God, and work miracles in our life, Father God. Purify our hearts, Father God, because we've been stepped on. We've been talked about. We've been lied on. We've been overlooked, Father God. And I'm speaking right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father God, that you move and begin to heal us right now, Father God, because we know people have been lying on us. Father God. We know people have been uh, yes, operating in witchcraft behind the scenes and we cancel the assignment of the enemy right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord God, that we will hold our heads up high in your name, Father God. We declare your name uh, in the atmosphere, Father God, even right now, Father God. Move in our lives, Father God. Touch our hearts right now. I know, I know, I know. I feel it in my spirit. Some of you just been wrestling within your heart because you got unsettled issues. And I'm praying right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that he begins to work miracles in your heart right now. Stuff that you've been wrestling with and trying to juggle and trying to get through. I'm praying right now that he works a miracle in your heart. That he begins to take out all the ungodliness. He begins to take out that situation. I'm praying just as he gave uh, in, in Ezekiel about the, the, the new heart. I'm praying Jesus. that he gives you a new heart oh, yes, so you can love, so you can serve. Jesus. Some of you trying to serve and, and you got ungodliness and you got brokenness in your heart. God says, I'm trying to mend your heart so you can serve yes, my Lord. people. Yes, Lord. God has given some of you a heart after, after his people. You're not even called a pastor, but he gave you a heart after his people. Ha. Huh? Glory, 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 glory. This is your releasement day in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we'll forever give your name the praise, glory, and honor for Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, come on, come on, people of God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your breakthrough is happening right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you all, whoever's been watching, we thank you for watching, but I don't know what God is about to do. You should have been here to see it, but as they're worshiping, we're going to exit this, but you should have been here to see what God was going to do. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Hallelujah.